All right. Awesome. Well, we, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar today. I'm uh, your host, Eric Nordoff, and right there is really the star of our show tonight, today. <laughs> Bailey Hager. Welcome, Bailey. Yes, I'm so excited for this and for the course, honestly, all that work. I know. Well, I was just telling everybody before the recording that we've spent, uh, mostly you have spent um, the last three months recording and uh, we've been planning this for probably six months now. And uh, we just yeah. realized that GarageBand is the place to start. Most of us use GarageBand. And even if you don't have GarageBand, if you have Logic or if you have a PC, um, there's tons you can learn from this webinar, I think, especially like uh, what we're talking about today. Yeah, basically like all the basics and all the vocabulary is pretty much the same across the board, no matter what program you're using. So yeah, you'll be able to get something out of it, I think. That's right. Well, before we totally get started and I pass the baton over to you, Bailey, I thought, um, first of all, uh, everyone that's joining us live, if you can, in the chat, let us all know where you're from. I'm already seeing people from Central Florida, from Kamano Island, Washington. That sounds really cool. Oh. I see Meg is from Florida, Columbus, Georgia, Colorado. Oh, yeah. Now it's coming in. Arizona, There's... Wisconsin. What? Yeah, I know. Spring Hill, Tennessee. We got Stacy. Uh, we got Oklahoma, Tucson, Chattanooga, Wisconsin. We got a lot of Wisconsinites. Yeah. Courtney from Michigan. Yep, Courtney from Michigan. Whoop whoop. Erie, Pennsylvania. Marissa from Nashville. Winter Haven, Wisconsin. Prince George, BC. Yeah, let's give it up, Derek. Uh, we've got Reg from New Jersey. David from Gulf Shores. Another Canadian from uh, the Maritimes, New Brunswick, Canada, Mooresville, St. Petersburg, Minneapolis, Nashville, Elizabeth from Nigeria. What? We got Joy, Natalie Joy from Manila. Manila. Oh I've been there. Beautiful country. Um, all right. Well, this is fun. So the way this is going to work is uh, while Bailey is teaching, um, you can go ahead and ask questions. But... If you have a question for me, you can ask it in the chat like you're doing right now for where you're from. If you have a general question for Bailey, I'd love for you to find the Q&A area uh, on the webinar and ask the question in the Q&A area. That kind of helps me organize things. So um, just let's move away from the chat. We've got Fort Wayne and Jim, Jim Lane is from Camp Hill. Um, Awesome. So Q&A area to ask questions periodically throughout the webinar. Uh, I'll, we'll have a chance to ask, sorry, to answer the questions that you're asking um, throughout. And then at the end, we'll also have plenty of time to answer questions um, that we didn't get to uh, at the end. Uh, so Bailey's going to teach here in a, in a minute or so. I'm going to mute myself. Uh, she's going to share, be sharing her screen. And uh, then we'll, we'll kind of back and forth at answer questions. And then I'll talk for about 10 minutes about the course that we've been working on the last three months. Um, and uh, it's launching today, um, the crash course on GarageBand. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, today. So thank you all for joining. Um, I'm gonna, uh, give it over to Bailey, but let me just tell you a little bit about Bailey. So we've known Bailey personally for, I don't know, four or five years, maybe six years. Uh, Bailey has been a worship leader, songwriter, producer, um, indie artist, uh, has moved here to Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville area, I guess now in Murfreesboro. Um, but she's been leading worship since she was a youngin, 12 years old, fell in love with writing songs for a church, is an amazing vocalist and songwriter. Um, after she received her first laptop at 17, she started experimenting with YouTube videos and tracking her own songs. And now she's a worship leader at Gateway in Shelbyville, Tennessee, an artist with Madison Street Worship, has multiple cuts on that album. 
on both albums and has also written multiple songs for other church projects around the world. She's not only writing songs for artists and other churches, uh, but she's also producing for songwriters. Several of you have, might have worked with Bailey to produce your demos and some of your songs. Um, she has um, some new music coming out soon and is such a creative. I love her heart. She's a joy to work with. So without further ado, why don't I just give it over to Bailey Hager so you guys can stop listening to me and listen to the star of our event today, our webinar today. Go Take it away, Bailey. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for all those kind words. I'm like blushing. My cheeks hurt. Um, so kind. I, I love Chrissy and Eric so much and it's been amazing knowing them over the years and working on this course was super fun. And um, Eric got to come over and kind of direct as we were filming here in my apartment and with my friends, John and Savannah. And I, and then I had so much fun on my own, like screen recording while talking into my mic. I felt like Eric as a professional podcaster. Um, and it was, it was super fun. And to explain what I was doing while I was doing it. And um, I kind of learned from, there's a, a website called Monthly, but I think they rebranded to something else now, but they um, did these courses with like Charlie Puth and Ryan Tedder, but some errors that I heard about that course that like, while they are, their screens were recording, they weren't explaining what they were doing as they were doing it. They were literally just messing around on their computer and you just had to watch them and um, I wanted to make sure that I did not do that. I wanted to make sure to actually explain what I was doing while I was moving my mouse around and clicking on things. So I tried my very best to like explain, to communicate, to break down these like concepts from GarageBand. Um, so I'm really excited about it. But today we're just going to be looking at something I started yesterday um, for a one on one. It's like pretty short, sweet and simple. So um, we're going to get into it. I'm going to share my screen with you guys and um, we're going to get started. So this is my garage band session. And today I'm, I'm not going to go over like setting up your session or anything like that. We're going to focus on vocals today because I want you to, to actually like be able to take the course and go through it step by step. I'm not going to be able to break down everything in a 30 minute span today. So we are just going to focus on vocals, but if you want to know how to set up a session um, and get started and, and all that stuff, then the course is definitely something I think would be useful for you. Um, but I've already got this session opened, um, and I'm gonna warn you ahead of time, these vocals do not sound good because I've done nothing to them and I literally just recorded it. Um, and unfortunately GarageBand does not have an auto-tune, um, feature in it. So that is one thing that's, you know, not as great. So tuning is normal for all music that you hear and honestly like if you were to release a song without tuning on it like people would be able to tell because our ears are just used to hearing tuned vocals it doesn't make you any less of a great singer if you have auto-tune on your vocals it's literally industry standard so um but today it is not industry standard we're uh, not gonna have that but we are gonna go over like eq and compression and some effects and i'm gonna make this vocal sound as best as i can um i also want to say something that might be a little controversial but i want to normalize um pretend not pretending like you know everything um we should feel comfortable actually saying, you know what, I actually don't know everything. And sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, it's very humbling to admit, I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes, sometimes we feel like we do know what we're doing, but most of the time we don't. And it's okay to admit that. I'm only saying that because I haven't, I hadn't before this course used GarageBand in a very long time, like since I was a teenager, because I've been using Logic probably for the last like seven, six or seven years. Um, so I had to like relearn and play, they've updated like everything since then. Um, so I had to relearn GarageBand. And so I'm still learning a little bit with you guys about where things are located, because although it looks very similar to Logic, um, some things are placed differently. And I've had to Google things and look things up and be like, where is this? And can you do this in GarageBand? And usually the answer is yes. 
So um, I'm just prefacing with that, that if I am trying to locate something, it's just because I'm still kind of learning where things are at here in GarageBand. Um, so let's normalize saying, you know what? I actually don't know. And that's okay. We'll learn together. All right. So this is what I have. It's very simple. I literally wrote this little lyric in 20 seconds. So no judging that. And um, we're going to listen to what this sounds like uh, without like as it is. So let's take a listen to what we have going on here. Can't really see. There we go. From the beginning. All right. I want to know you like I've never before. I want to see you. Actually, you know what? I <laughs> see already. I need to move this vocal over. It is coming in too soon. So oh, I'm going to click this. I'm going to move this over. So it came in too soon. So this is great because this is actually sometimes part of the editing process. So um, this needs to come in right here. I'm gonna make this bigger by dragging this little icon here. I'm gonna look at the waveform. Let's see if that helps. I wanna know. There we go. Like I've never before. Okay, but now I dragged this one over. So Let's see. Oh, I'm wondering, oh. No, so it's behind. I'm going to click here. So you see you have these two options right here on this vocal. You've got this little round icon, which is for looping. So if I clicked and dragged, that would loop. What if I got, and then below it is the little arrows, the back and forth. That's just for extending and like cutting away. So I'm going to cut this away a little bit. I'm going to drag this. Let's see. Oh. Now it came in too soon. This is real, guys. This is literally, this is normal. Just letting you know that right now. Oh. Nope, still early. Oh my goodness. Oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm wondering. Almost. Okay, so now everything is in place where it needs to be. Um, I guess we can listen to it from start to finish now, and then we'll get into editing this, uh, mixing this vocal. Here we go. I want to know. Nice and rough. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this smaller here so I can see everything. Okay, so the first thing I usually do when I am ready to start mixing my vocal is I will tune it um, for one. I use something that's called Waves Tune Light or just LT. Um, it was $50 from Waves. And I love it because you can just like select the key you're in and then you press play and let it play through the vocal and it tunes it and then when you play it back your vocals tuned it's wonderful um so what we're gonna do here is this little icon up here with the little dial the dots 
that's where you go to find like where your effects and what are called plugins are called and they're going to be in this little empty box these little slots are all for effects that you can add and uh, GarageBand does have a limit on how many you can have on logic you can add as many as you want to but on here we have like one two three four so I'm going to show you um, the ones to use uh, for um, you know maximizing your, the amount of plugins you can put in here so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to solo this vocal which just means we're going to play the vocal by itself so we can hear it by hitting this little headphone icon um, to listen to just the vocal. Um, and I may have to turn my thing up just a little bit so that I can actually hear it. Otherwise, because I need to make it sound good. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to EQ by taking the bad frequencies out of the vocal. Um, and then I'm going to boost the good ones on a separate thing. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is take away the ugly frequencies, and I'm going to show you how to find those. And this is something that I've watched on YouTube videos over and over, and until I actually, like, um, really trained my ears, it probably took me, just being honest, probably close to a year to really train my, or train my ears to hear those frequencies that I was trying to find and cut them out. Um, so if right now, like, you can't hear exactly what I'm talking about, which you... you know, I'm going to really exaggerate it, so you should, but don't feel bad and don't beat yourself up. I've, like, worked to train my ear to hear this, but I'm going to go here to the top and uh, select a plugin. We're going to go here to channel EQ. It's going to bring up this thing. I'm going to make sure the analyzer is turned on. This shows you when they're playing the vocal um, where your frequencies are resonating on the uh, board here. So if I play it, Oh, yeah. like I've never known before. So you can see down here, it's showing you where those frequencies are at. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can. Oh, no, I don't want that. I do want it out. Oh, let's. I want to go closer. Let's try 150. There we go. This is great. Look how close we are. Okay. So um, we're going to listen to this. Um, I'm going to stop myself in a second. Uh, we're just going to watch it and listen for a second, watch what I do, and then I'll explain it, okay? Um, so, show you like I've never known before. I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I okay, so you've got a couple of these, um, like, either shelves um, or cuts here and uh, the, with the frequency, the gain is like the volume of coming up or cutting out. Um, and then, so I just took one of these and I made it they're pretty wide, but you can take this cue here and drag it, uh, click with your mouse and drag up or click with your mouse and drag down. It's gonna either widen that or narrow it. To find an ugly frequency, I want it pretty narrow so I can just drag it up like this and move it around. And as I'm moving it around slowly, it's heightening those frequencies. When I find one that hurts my ears, I click and I drag and just cut it out by, um, by a couple of dB. Or this is like by 10 dB. So dB is, stands for decibels. Um, and so, yeah, so let's listen to this vocal again real quick. And listen to where I, when I heighten the frequency, listen to what it sounds like, and then listen what it sounds like when I cut it out. And then we'll stop for a second and um, ask for questions if anybody has questions of what we've gone through so far. So give me one moment. Oh, yeah. Like I've never known before. I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know you. Perfect. Okay, did you hear that? Almost like was like um, distorting a little bit when I did that around the 400 uh, hertz. Uh, let's see. So I just click and drag it like that. Uh, is it too like 400K? Sorry. Okay. This is the hertz over here. Okay. 
Um, Eric, do we have any questions that people have asked from where we are so far? Yes, really just one question. Okay. Um, is the wave tuner, well, it's kind of one, a two part question about the wave tuner. Yeah. Can you give the, the vocal tuner name again, the $50 one? Yeah, it's called Waves Tune LT. Waves Tune LT. And is that a plugin or software? It's a plugin that you purchase, yeah, from, from waves.com. But is that for Logic or GarageBand? You should be able to use it in both. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So do you have, do you want me to look up the link in the meantime and I'll share it in the group? Sure. Okay, Waves Tuner LT. Yeah. All right. Those are the only questions we have so far. Awesome. Let's keep going then um, on this vocal. So usually I try to find the lower frequencies because like the the ones that sound like like in my vocal or like the muffly low end ones that just make my vocal sound um, like muddy. Those are the vo those are the frequencies I try to find. Usually in my vocal, I'm taking out between like the um, 300 to like 600 range. So like right in here is what they call the box frequencies. Um, and usually it's what makes your vocal sound boxy and like nasally. Um, and it's usually right in here. So let's continue um, to cut out these ugly frequencies. Let's see what it sounds like here in the chorus. Under I'm in all. Oh, you have my love, you have my heart. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. That open door, so much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know you. I want to know you. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Oh, you have okay. I thought that was it, but then it made my vocal sound like it took out like the meat of my vocal and it sounded really thin and um not good. So let me try that one more time. On through that open door, so much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know you. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think that that sounds a lot better let i'm gonna play this for you by turning the eq off so you can hear the difference of what just taking out these three like major frequencies sounds like so this is without the eq that we just did oh you like i've never known before i want to see you I'm walking With through it. that open door. Without. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. With. I want to know you. I want to know you. This sounds a lot um, clearer, and it's, it doesn't have some of those lower frequencies, um, and it's not as muddy. So that's great. Um, the other thing is I will, once I've EQ'd it a little bit, I will play like one instrument, usually the, acu the acoustic or the piano with it to see how it compares. So let's check that out real quick. Oh, you, like I've never known before. I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. Honestly, EQ makes such a difference. I haven't even boosted the good ones. We just took out the ugly ones. And that sounds pretty decent. Um, and honestly, you what I just showed you on this EQ, you do that with basically every instrument. Um, you can do this with anything. If you hear something, you're like, man, it doesn't really sound good. Maybe you don't need to throw an effect on it to make it sound good. Maybe you actually need to go into the EQ and find if there's some frequencies that you're realizing are hurting your ears or just aren't sounding good to your ears and cutting those bad frequencies out. And honestly, look, I only took out three. I didn't have to take out like a bunch. Um, I will say though that I do take about like 50 to 60 off no matter what. Um, cause anything that's resonating down here, I don't want, I want my bass or my lower instruments to, to, um, cover that. Um, I don't want any of that low frequency in my voice. So, um, 
And if you're a guy, you're still probably want to take about like this much. You don't need to have frequencies resonating down here. Um, it's just going to muddy your mix up. So I'm going to take that out. So I've taken out four frequencies. Um, and so it's not a lot. It's just some precision stuff. So that sounds great. Let's go ahead and um, boost some of the good ones. So I'm going to add another channel EQ um, and a compressor. And then I'm going to ma mess with the reverb. I'm going to turn this off. This here, you can use it. It just doesn't put you in very much control. You, there's no way, like I'll show you the reverb plugins. They just have a little bit more options that you can control rather than just having one massive reverb that you can't really do anything with. Some of the reverbs in GarageBand, you control, you can control how much high end of the reverb there is. And um, it's like an EQ within the reverb. It's pretty nice. Um, so let's go ahead and play this. Add another EQ. And you'll notice like EQ and compression will be my main tools on to make this vocal sound good, not reverb and delay. Those are just extra. Um, EQ and compression is really what is going to make the difference in your mix for your vocal. Uh, and we'll go over that uh, compression next. So don't worry. Um, all right, here we go. All right. I keep hitting the wrong. Oh, thing. you. Like I've never known before. I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know you. I want to know you. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Like I've never known before I want to see you I'm walking through that open door So much Okay, so you'll notice I left this one a little bit more uh, uh, wider Because within the 2K on, uh, to like 6K range On a female vocal um, Is kind of where the crispiness is um, and so I left it pretty wide, just boost from, from there on a guy, it's probably going to be within like one K to three K. Um, but depends on the voice, honestly, I'd have to like hear, but that's probably a good generalization. Um, and then boosting between like, uh, where are we? So like 15 or like 1600 to 20 K just a little bit to give like the top end, like crispiness um on the vocal um i want to make sure it doesn't sound like thin i want to make sure that there's a good like mid-range in the vocal so let's take a look at that real quick oh you like i've never known before i want to see you i'm walking through that open door so much beauty to behold when i'm with you i am home i want to know you I want to know you Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe Oh, you have my love, you have my heart Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe I don't really like that. I like it how it is, I think, until we listen to everything else. For now, I, I like that. Um... So simple things. It wasn't a lot of craziness going on in that. So we have those two EQs. Um, and okay, next is compression. So let's bring that up here. Okay, I'm just going to be real with you guys. I don't like the way this looks in GarageBand. Um, in Logic, it's so much more visual. There's like graphs. You can actually see the needle moving of how much compression is hitting and when. Um, this, like looking at this is like, for somebody who doesn't really know a lot about compression, this is confusing because you need to know what the threshold, the ratio and attack is. And then on the compressor in Logic, there's something that's called release and everything. Um, and honestly, I might bring up a Logic compressor just so you can actually see it because actually seeing it might actually help you understand 
what this is doing even more. I just said actually like five times. <laughs> um, so, but let me give you a basic rundown of what compression is because you may have heard the word, but we don't actually know what it does. So compression is like basically controlled volume and um, it's setting the threshold is like the top of the frequencies are not going to go past this ceiling. And then um, it's like controlling the sound and giving it a ceiling and a floor, kind of like squashing it like that. Um, so that's the threshold is like controlling the top and the bottom of the sound by like squashing it a little bit. The ratio, which is right here, is how much of the compressor is hitting the sound. The attack is how quickly the compressor is going to hit the sound as soon as you're singing. Um, and then gain is just another word for volume. The great thing about GarageBand is we do have presets in here. And so your best bet is to use a preset and then tweak the preset um, as you go. And they give you a lot of options, right? And you've got compressors for drums. Listen, put compression on literally almost everything. It's just going to be just it just is a game changer for sound and experiment with the compressor like there's really no rules for it you're literally just saying like does this sound good if it sounds good then you know I can ask somebody else does it sound good experiment because compressors can really do so much and you even can be used as an effect on my vocal I use two compressors and then something that's called parallel compression we won't get into that for now but I just it's really good so you need to learn how to use these let me um, go ahead. I don't know if it will let me bring up Logic at the same time, but we're going to try real quick. It may not. Is this a good time for questions? Yeah, let's go ahead. All right. Uh, so while you're doing that, we have about five questions. Phoebe asked, um, "Listen, uh, does auto-tune differ from pitch correction on GarageBand? So or is it the same thing? It's the same thing. Um, one time it let me bring up the pitch correction, but then it told, but then another time, like I tried to reopen it and it said it was a feature that was from like logic or something. Um, mm -hmm. But pitch correction and uh, uh, auto tune, same thing. Same thing. Okay. Um, all right. Then there's some questions about EQ while that's loading. Um, Meg asks, is it, is it kind of random how you hunt for the bad frequencies? They could be anywhere on the spectrum. She's asking. Yeah. So you really just have to take one of those things and you just have to start somewhere. So I've chosen in my head, like I'm going to start with the lower ones, but you can just take one of those. Um, I don't even know what they're called and see, that's where I have to admit, I don't know everything. Um, I, cause I know there's a name for him, but I just take one of those like colored shelves and I drag it up and I just will drag it around slowly. And you just have to find something that's like majorly going to hurt ears. And you don't want to cut out everything. Like you notice, I only took out like three, um, uh -huh. because if you take out a lot, you're basically taking out all the sound. Um, right. So. Right. <laughs> Bringing everything down just makes it totally muted. Um, I wouldn't worry about the logic. I think you explained it really well, by the way. I was going to say that one. I could just open a new one. But um, I mean, I at least want to show you guys what one just looks like really quick. So this is what it looks like. Um, oh, let's bring up a compressor real quick. And everybody understands that logic is an upgrade to GarageBand that you have to pay for. GarageBand oh, okay. comes with your Mac free. Yes, GarageBand is free that comes with... Uh, a computer logic is basically the upgraded version of GarageBand. And um, yeah, so this is what a compressor looks like in logic. So a lot different. Here's the graph um, or the meter, and then here's a graph. And so it's like you're messing. Here's the threshold. So um, and obviously in GarageBand, it looks just like this. You have one slider and it's showing you like the decibels. Um, so here's the threshold there, the ratio, how much compression is hitting. Makeup is gain. It's just, I don't know, they call it uh, makeup here, but it's the gain one. 
the attack, how fast the compressor is hitting. And then on here, you have got the release. And then you, even here you have mix, how much of this compressor you're adding onto the sound. Um, so basically, if you can understand threshold ratio and attack, then you've got a basic understanding of, uh, of compression, compression. So that's what that looks like. I'm glad I was able to show that to you. Um, While you do that, uh, Bailey, um, <clears throat> Kay said, uh, did you mean nodes? Uh, and Nick said, I think the word you're looking for is waveform earlier. Oh, um, the waveform is like the sound, but the little, these things, because there's different names for um, these than this, like this is a shelf. Mm -hmm. It looks like a shelf. Um, and I know that one, but my brain is just blanking on like what these ones are called. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, nodes, I think she was trying to say, but maybe that's not it either. Um, okay, back to uh, Meg had another question. It, I've tried the GarageBand built-in tuner. What do you think of it? Just less specific? Um, it's it's fine. It'll do it um, as long as you just can add like a little bit. I think adding like the low, like a low end, because if you add a lot, it's going to make you sound like T-Pain. Um and like a robot, but I think adding a little bit, I mean, it's fine. It's probably better than just having your, like your raw vocal. Yeah. So, okay. okay. <clears throat> so they don't need to have that waves tune necessarily. It, it, um, it's so interesting. So like, we're talking about this. Oh, look at, no, that's the pitch shifter. What? Um, pitch shifter is not it. Um, Oh, look, um, where, it should be in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't let me open it and I don't know, uh, if that's normal. Um, but if there's a free one in there, then just use it because I'm all about using the stock plugins. So yeah, I'm just letting you know what I use and it wouldn't let me open it before but anyway yeah so that's fine if you like and if you like the way it sounds use it go for it um bailey can you hear me okay yeah i uh somehow i just lost the q a uh area but anyway uh someone asked it cut me out and now i'm i'm back in but i can't see the old questions um so a Mac is people are asking, um, is there a PC that does the same thing? Well, GarageBand is an Apple product, right. an Apple software to explain to everybody. So it's only going to be found on Mac. Um, PCs, you're going to have use something um, called Audacity is a free software that you can download. Um, some of the terms will be the same, but it's not GarageBand software. So this this course and today we're just going to be working inside of GarageBand, really, just to explain that to you. Hopefully that is clear there, Carol. Um, let me just see if I missed some of these other questions. Uh, do you always track each part separately? Uh, Ari was asking. Not always, um, but sometimes it's better to focus on one part to sing it as best you can and then do the next part. Um, sometimes I'll just try to get it all in one, but if I mess up, I'll just stop it and go back and then do that one part. Um, I'll like honestly, um, what's called vocal comping and editing um, is pretty normal by just going in and singing certain parts and putting them in. Um, most of the times the songs you hear on like the radio and Spotify and everything, what that is, is they've done it part by part and they go and listen of what, out of all the takes that they did, watch the best part of each one. And then they put all those parts together. So they literally took the best part of each take and then pieced it together to get like one perfect vocal. Um, so that's like pretty normal to do it in, in pieces or, um, to do it multiple times and then listen through each one and pick the best parts and put it together as one vocal. Okay. So, um, that's great that you, you answered that. Um, 
I had, I got some people typing in the chat and some people in the Q&A. If you can ask in the Q&A, that'd be easier for me, but I am seeing the chat messages. Um, I, Christine was asking, can you explain the different shelves for EQ? We never got to that one. That's the only one that I think so far I haven't answered. Um, yeah, so basically they just give you all of these options to be able to, because you've got this one here to boost and, um, and take away. So that's what I'm saying is, you know what, I'm going to look it up real quick because Google is our friend and I would really actually like to refresh my brain on what those are called. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Google. Let's pause for this message sponsored by Google. Google, thank you for answering all of that. Um, by the way, while she's looking that up, David Davis uh, gave us some help here. Waveform Free is a DAW for PC that is free. So that's another piece of software that you could use on the PC other than Audacity. I've never used Waveform Free, but I have used Audacity. Um, Meg said, it's just a built-in slider that can force your pitch to notes in your selected key mm -hmm. from nothing to 100%. You can't specify any frequencies. So I guess they just call these like EQ boosts. Um, I don't remember where that was. Let me just do uh, curves. Oh, they're called bells. I knew that. And look, because it, it looks like a bell, guys. See, refreshing my memory. So this is a shelf. This is a bell. Um. Yes, uh, notch slash bell filter, Marissa is saying, question mark. Um, I think we don't have to get too stuck on these things. They're yeah, just no. But yeah, these calling bells, because mainly that's what you're going to be using is the bell. Yeah. Okay, that. Yeah, let's, Um, I want to get back to compression because we're almost done here. And the next thing we'll add is reverb, but let's. Let's compress this vocal real quick, guys. Great. And then we'll we'll get to the rest of your questions after. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here to the voice. And I'm going to do... Let's try studio vocal. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. Okay. Let's listen to this. Oh, you... Like I've never known before. I wanna see you. So it definitely boosted the volume. Walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. Okay, here's the other thing. These garage band compressors will also do stuff to the EQ. So you'll notice it made the high end, it boosted the high end a lot, and now there's still it's boosting some low end frequency that I can hear it. It sounds like um when I'm singing. So we're gonna fix this. You, like I've never known before I want to see you I'm walking through that open door So much beauty to behold Okay, I like the volume of it So now I'm just going to go in And I'm going to um, drag this down a little bit Because it's it boosted a little bit of high end So I'm going to do this And then it boosted a ugly low end frequency So let's find that or I want to see you I'm walking through that open door So much beauty to behold When I'm with you, I am home I want to know you I've never known before I want to see you I'm walking through that open door Door. So much beauty to behold When I'm with you, I am home I want to know you I want to know you Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe Oh, you have I think that's 
that's better. So now um, I'm going to, so I've boosted the volume and I've boosted a couple of like frequencies. I like what it's doing, um, but let's see what it sounds like with everything else. And we can edit a little bit from there. I want to know you like I've never known before. I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold when I'm with you. I like that. Um, cool. So it's at a good volume. Um, uh, the EQ sounds great. So now let's just add a little bit of uh, reverb to it so it's not as dry. Um, and then we're going to go down here to reverb and they've got like different types. Um, let's see what silver bur silver verb <laughs> looks like. Um, and they should have, they have some like little presets here. Uh, I don't, I think. Let's try a hall and see what that sounds like. Probably too big. Yeah, way too much. Like I've never known. Okay, so the wet and dry signal, dry signal is like it's mixing how much is dry and how much is wet. It's so funny that the wet's at 34%, but it's like so much reverb. So it's probably the room size. So we can probably bring that down. Before I want to see you. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. Okay, do you hear what that's doing? um the density time it's like almost like bringing this like delay like slap delay effect let's bring that back over here when i'm with you i am home i want to know you i want to know you it's not bad let's see oh i'm in wonder i'm in all mind that let me try one different one um that silver verb let's try platinum we've got a little bit more options here here's where you can control the high frequency of the reverb you can take out the high frequency of a reverb because reverb does have an eq um let's try i don't know what reflective room is but oh yeah like I've never known before, I want to see you. Okay, I actually like that one better. There is a little bit of a high frequency. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know you. Wow, I like that one. It sounds better. I want to know you. So pre-delay is how much reverb is hitting like right at the beginning of your phrase. I like to really just leave the pre-delay down and I just want the reverb on like the ends of my phrasing usually. Um, and honestly, guys, this is just for experimentation. These are not that all of the dials, everything in GarageBand is not meant to intimidate you. It is literally your playground for you to just be like what does this do and just move it around and find stuff that you think that sounds cool this is literally for like experimentation and cr and to be able to create whatever you want to everything in here like the guidelines that I give you are once you learn the guideline or the rule you can break it because this is about like creativity so I'll literally I will just go in and move stuff around and be like that sounds cool and then get excited about it um so yeah, so it's just about experimenting. I think I really like that reverb. Let's see what it sounds like with everything else. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Bring it down. Oh, you have my love, you have my heart. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Not bad. I wonder if I can add a little bit of this master echo. I know I said I can't, wouldn't use it, but now I'm out of space for plugins. Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Oh, you have my love, you have my heart. I like that. 
just a little bit, you know? Oh, I'm in wonder, I'm in awe. Nice. Okay, guys. Last thing I'm going to do is turn all these plugins off and listen to what we did on this vocal, okay? guys um we went over eq and compression a little bit of reverb um those things are really going to transform your vocal making sure that you can cut out the ugly frequencies in your voice usually going to be in the box frequency section which is going to be between like 300 to like 600 hertz maybe a little bit in the 200 i take about 200 to 250 out of my voice every time um there's just like a low end thing there it's just not pretty so Taking those out is really going to help you and then just boost a little bit of the high end, maybe a little bit of mid so that your vocal doesn't sound like really thin. Um, and then use compression to squash the vocal a little bit, squash some of the higher frequencies, some of the lower ones to just smooth it, like smoothing it around like, like pottery or something, You're smoothing it out. Um, and then you can experiment with like your effects like reverb delay. Um, and other things like that, but that's pretty much it for mixing vocal and garage band sounds pretty decent. So, yeah. Well, you did a great job with that, Bailey. Um, I'm going to join in here for just a second. We've got a set. We've got eight questions that we're going to get to lots of really, really good questions. So we're going to answer everyone's questions, um, before we finish here. Um, and thanks, uh, everyone's saying how great it sounds and, uh, how good it sounds and you shouldn't be too hard on your vocals. You sound really good. Um, but I know, uh, I know you're, uh, you want to make it sound as good as possible. Um, but listen, uh, real quickly, if I could, uh, take over and share the screen for a second, yeah. uh, Bailey, uh, thanks. Uh, I'm just going to share with you guys. So, uh, we already talked in the beginning about that. This has kind of been a labor of love for the last three months. Uh, together, Bailey and I, and uh, we're finally ready to release the full GarageBand crash course. Um, and so there's going to be a lot more in this course from the start from start to to end. Um, and there's two ways that you can um, to get this course this week, especially at 25% off the original price. So normally uh, the self-guided is $199. Uh, we uh, reduced it to basically 149 with 25% off discount this week. Um, and uh, so uh, here's basically the course curriculum. You can kind of look at it here. Um, every one of them has videos, not only of Bailey, but of her screen shares. Um, and uh, there are three main classes. The first one is getting ready to record. Um, all the setup of gear, garage band, everything you're going to need, tools you need to download, links. It has um, full PDFs, important PDF downloads for each class as well um, that you can download and print or download and click on the links. Um, and then uh, class two is actually stepping into then recording once you've got it ready all the elements of recording your instruments, uh, your must-haves, your percussion, uh, your vocal recordings, all the things um, uh, related to that. And then um, class three is mixing, everything related to mixing techniques, mixing vocals, which we talked about a lot today, and then uh, a finished demo, and then final thoughts and encouragement uh, from, from you. And like I said, there's two ways that you can purchase this and I'm going to share the links with you guys. Uh, this is the way to do it on your own. You can take it on your own, and that'd be 149 this uh, week. Uh, take advantage of that if you can, and then you can also uh, take it in a group session together with Bailey. So Bailey's offer to do group coaching. Uh, the same 25% discount uh, is included, and that's going to be uh, 224. So it'll either be 149 when you take advantage of that this week on your own, and then group sessions. She's gonna do three group sessions with you 
Uh, so uh, it's going to be group sessions. You'll get a chance to answer your questions in a much more small group format. And each week you'll go through, Bailey's going to go through each class. Uh, so getting ready to record and then she'll answer all the questions related to that. Class two, week two, will be uh, recording your demo. She'll answer all your questions related to that and then mixing your demo. It's all gonna be done via Zoom and it's gonna be basically kind of one-on-one -on -one with Bailey. Um, so that's uh, that's all happening. I'll put the links in the chat uh, so that you can um, click on those and take advantage of those. Also, don't worry if you uh, can't get access to this. Everyone that registered for the webinar is gonna get access to all the links for this course and for the group coaching sessions. So um, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and uh, I'll go into the chat. Um, and Amy asked, will this pod, there possibly be a future crash course on logic? Well, that's a question for Bailey. Why don't you answer that question first if that's something you wanna do? I mean, I'm not completely opposed to it. I, I, yeah, I haven't. I've been using Logic now for like six six years. Um, I mean, if I did that, it wouldn't be like literally had everything in Logic. Like, I think Logic can still do some things that I don't even know it can do um, because there's just so much in it. But I mean, I could give like a basic recording in Logic thing, but. Um, right now, I don't have any plans to do that. I'm not saying no, but um, I'm also down, you know, to talk about doing, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. If you wanted to do like a basic rundown of logic, uh, we could discuss that. But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say never, but no plans for that right now. Okay, good stuff. Um, all right, so uh, let's jump into questions the rest of this time, guys. Um, I'm going to pop, while you answer the questions, I'm going to pop the links in the chat for people. Um, uh, Reg asked in the chat, what are your options for increasing the volume of the vocal? The volume control has limitations and feel free to, uh, share your screen again, if you need to Bailey. Yeah. Let's go in here real quick. Um, I wonder, so you should have something in here called, okay. So we've got a couple of things. Um, compression, compression does give you the gain, uh, option, which is bringing up the volume. So watch this. Oh, yeah. Like I've never known before. I want to see that open door. So much beauty to behold when I'm with. So there's that option. Um, then you can also do something that is called um, a limiter. Um, I thought there would be a, like a utility. For that. So in the dynamics um, here, there is, or no, here's a utility. So you can just also just add a gain uh, plugin. Oh, look at it. let me add more. Whoa. Okay. So that's good to know. I did not know that you can have more than four plugins. That's a great, okay. Um, yeah, so that you have gain right here. You can just bring up the gain. That's 24 dB. You do not want to do that, but there's an option there. And then there's a limiter. Yeah, there's, there's, there's so many options for how you can bring up the vocal rather than just this knob right here. So. Okay, cool. Um, Meg asks, how do you punch in if you like most of your take but want to go back and re-record the second chorus again? Yeah, so you could literally just... Um... Just like that and punch it in. And then click and drag if you're like, okay, it was just this one line. Then you could just go like that. Um, just record right over it and then piece together those parts. Um, I'm going to hit Command Z for undo. Um, yeah, just like that. You can go in and punch in and then click and use these little arrows to just click and slide the track. Okay, awesome. Um, Carla asks, within one track, how many bells would you usually do? I think you answered that 
about three is usually what you said, but. Um, yeah, uh, up to probably four, like cutaways. Um, for boosting, it might be a little bit different. Um, I usually don't in in Logic. I don't use a separate EQ. I use a plugin that I have that's a, like another separate EQ that I like. It uh, kind of looks a little bit more like this, and I will just play with the knobs and um, to turn up different frequencies. So, but in cutting away, probably up to four or five. Um, and here I did use five. So I used almost all of them except for the two shelves. Okay. Uh, does order make a difference? Would you ever use a use compression first so you don't have to re EQ? This is a great question because um, so basically this right here is called a vocal chain. So a chain is you know what it looks like is like all the links, right? So whatever is up top is basically your sound is running through your chain from top to bottom. So whatever whatever effects you have on the top is what your vocal or your sound is gonna go through first. And on most things I've found people do EQ and then compression because what I want it to do is when the sound runs through my chain, I want it to cut away the bad frequencies first. On my vocal chain on Logic, I use the tuner first because I want it to go through the auto-tune first, then I'll do the EQ, and then I'll do the compression, and then all my like other effects. You'll notice that if I change the order of these uh, plugins, it will change the sound of the, of the vocal. So let's try that real quick. Let's put like reverb at the top just by clicking and dragging this up here like that. Now it puts the EQ at the bottom. Oh, you, like I've never known before. I want to see you. You notice it's really, you just hear the reverb first. Um, and then it's running through the, com the compressor. So, and then which one is this one? So this is the boost. Yeah, just. Ew. I'm walking through that open door. So much beauty to behold. When I'm with you, I am home. I want to know. Okay, you might not have heard that. That's a very subtle difference right here. When I changed these EQs and po posted the, did the, the um, boosts first, it like boosted the high end frequency and I could hear that. Um, that sounded like. Or I want to see. And then my vocal a lot crispier. Ew. I'm walking through that open door. So much be anyway, so that's yeah, anyway, that was a long answer to that question, but the order does matter. Um, I usually do EQ first and then compression and then tweak from there. Though that was great because there were a couple of other questions from others about that same sort of um answer that you gave. So wonderful. Um a similar related question is from VL Chip. Um, he says, what is the advantage of multiple EQs? Can all the EQs be put on one? Okay. Yes. I go over this in the course as well. The reason I did two is because like I said, your sound is running through this from top to bottom. I don't like putting cuts and boosts in one EQ because I want it to focus on one or the other. Um, but I mean, you can do it. It will affect the sound just a little bit, um, subtle differences, um, but I just want it to sound the best that it can um, on the vocal chain. And, and like I said, um, on Logic, I don't use two of these. I'll use one of these to cut away the bad frequencies and then I'll add another outside plugin that I have that looks like this and tweak and boost from there. Awesome. Okay, um, Meg asks, even if a demo is just a simple piano and vocal, how many tracks do you end up with on yours typically? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so I, on my basic piano vocal demos, I will have a keyboard or piano or an acoustic, one or the other, uh, a shaker, um, which you can find here in the loops section um, by searching shaker. Um, well, I have two keyboards. Sorry, guys. Can you um, show that again, by the way? Uh, where's the loop section? Yep, here on the uh, right-hand side. Looks oh, like there it is. Okay. And then you can just search. 
So, um, and then these swells right here. Uh, and I, all, everything that I have that's outside of GarageBand will be provided in the PDF file with the course with links to everything. So yeah, in my basic um, acoustic vocals, uh, vocal, piano, shaker, swells, and that's pretty much it. Maybe a bass to like give it some beef. So like maybe at five tracks total. Okay. Um, with older versions of GarageBand, I could play the keyboard as instruments. I have been away from the current versions. How is this feature? How does this feature work in the current versions? You can still use your MIDI keyboard to play like every instrument within GarageBand. Um, these are loops that I use. In I want to. We had a crash in the crash course. Yeah, we did. That was bad. I'm glad I didn't do that at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so you could still use your MIDI keyboard um, to play uh, any software instrument right in here. So it says plug in a USB MIDI keyboard to play and record using a wide variety of instruments like piano, organ, synths, drums, anything. So still just like that. Okay, cool. Um, Meg asks, uh, do the frequencies you take out depend on what key the song is in or how high and low the pitches you are singing are? Um, doesn't really depend on the key, but maybe if you're singing like a, in a higher key, yeah, you might end up taking more higher frequencies out that are hurting your ears rather than the low ones. Um, but yeah, it, it really just depends on really who's singing because everybody's voice sits in different frequency ranges. And so a guy and a girl's EQ might be different, but also a tenor and a bass guy vocals will also resonate in different um, frequencies. So it doesn't really depend on the key um, may, uh, or of the song and maybe how high the voice is. Yes, but it really just depends on the person who's singing. Okay. I only have one last question here, um, and then we should wrap up. Um, Evangeline is asking, is there a volume that is normally used when exporting for Spotify or other like YouTube? Um, yes, and you can find that on Google. You can find what the like DB usually is for something, a track that's mastered and put out on Spotify. For YouTube, I'm not sure. You could probably Google that as well. Um, but YouTube does have built in compressors. So that's just something to note that it'll compress your sound a little bit, no matter what. Um, and, but yes, for Spotify and iTunes and any professionally released track, they do sit within a certain decibel amount. I'm not a mastering engineer. Mastering engineers go through that and know what it needs to be at for, um, industry standard. Um, so that's a thing. And that's why sometimes mastering and mixing, they're, they're two different things. It's why you hire two different people for it because they are both different ball games. I couldn't agree more. Uh, but we're not really talking about releasing music and recording things for uh, releasing onto Spotify. Um, uh, now, YouTube might be different. Uh, you, could, you could release a demo on, on YouTube if you wanted to. Yeah. But um, really, we're talking about just a very simple demo crash course in GarageBand and uh, how you can make it so it can be shared, um, possibly learned by your worship band or, um, you know, sending or to, show to a producer. Once you wanted to have it produced, you could give them an idea of like what you're kind of wanting rather than just giving them a voice memo work tape because then they can do whatever they want to it. Instead of trying to explain with your words what you wanted to sound like, you could have a demo made of kind of the vibe that you're wanting for the song to show to a producer. Great, yeah, that's right. Uh, VL has one last question here. Plugins has a sampler now. Well, that's not a question, it's more of a statement. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, oh you're, you're right. I think it's just the, 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I probably need to just quit and restart it. That's right. That's right. Okay. So speaking of quitting, um, that may have been the crash is what he's saying. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Bailey, this has been so valuable. You're getting a ton of, uh, of great responses and comments here. Um, super, super grateful for everything that you've done and, uh, uh, how you did it was just been, been so great. So, uh, Bailey, uh, everybody, um, you can, uh, obviously follow Bailey on socials and reach out to her that way. Um, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one with Bailey, uh, the best way to do it would be through that group coaching session uh, uh, with GarageBand. Uh, it's going to be really, really valuable. And Bailey, we forgot to tell everybody, when will you be leading those three weeks? When are you planning on doing those three weeks? Yes. So we're going to start doing those three weeks in June, actually. Um, so the class does launch this month for you to take, but it's all it's been pre-recorded, so you can take that. But I'll be doing the live group one-on-one -on -one sessions um, in June. I think we said June 4th, Saturday mornings would uh, be best and when those would be happening. So if that works for you and something you'd like to do three weeks in June, then we can do that. That's right. Three weeks in June. Going to be uh, your time to learn and really dive deep into GarageBand and, and uh, go from beginner to maybe intermediate. Who knows if you go through this. So. Again, I'll put the links up. Everybody that registered will get the link to this uh, webinar to watch it again. And then uh, also the links for the course and the uh, group coaching. All right. Any final words, Bailey? Um, I just want to thank everybody for getting on this webinar. Or if you register and you watch it later, like, thank you so much. Um, I do want to say that my goal is to be able to equip and empower people to be able to do this, um, especially women and girls because there's just such a low percentage of female producers um, in the industry. And so I hope that this encourages you um, to create and to not be intimidated, but to really just experiment and have fun with it. Think of it as like a playground instead of something that should scare you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for signing up for this webinar. If you decide to take the course, thank you so much for that as well. Um, and then last, but definitely not least, I just want to thank Eric and Chrissy for partnering with me on this. Um, and I appreciate it so much. Uh, we love you, Bailey. We appreciate you so much. And um, you're such a valuable part of our community. Um, just by being who you are, you add so much encouragement and light. Um, we can definitely see Jesus uh, shining through you. So, uh, all right, everyone. Um, have a great one and, uh, we'll, uh, see you again soon for another webinar sometime. Bless you. Bye. Bye.